Oh no. Agent X here. Agent Tex here. It's fishing day y'all and this time we're headed to a ghost forest to fish. All right let's head out. saw that you wiped out bad you remember how i told you to wear pants mm -hmm. are you glad you wore pants mm -hmm. i i was prepared to come here i mean that was so bad you <laughs> fell really well there i'm proud of you 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 fell really well yeah he's not right used to riding the scooter but he can't bring his dirt bike because the dirt bike won't make it all the way out here and back and so this scooter will go like 20 miles so i had him do this but i was telling him the scooter is not really meant for big bumps did you hit this bump right here yeah, ugh. Were you just trying to keep going for the drone? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Axel. Oh, come here, buddy. I'm so sorry. Yeah, he was, he, I was trying to film this drone scene and he was oh, focusing on like, keep look going for the drone scene. Ow. Oh, that is rough, man. Now, let's check out the leg. That, not too bad. That's not too bad, but you got a bruise there. Ow. Oh. Oh, that hurts Yikes. super bad. That's so big. Oh my gosh. And then this one. What about this? This one here? hurts more on the knee. Really? Uh-huh. On the knee. On the knee. Oh yeah, your knee. Oh, oh what's that? That's wow. net order. Oh yeah. Mm. I'm gonna drive mango snack. Forget about the kid. Is the scooter damaged? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the scooter got scraped pretty bad right there, and right there on the speed dial thing, that scraped pretty bad. It's a good thing this is used. I'm gonna have to do this. <laughs> I actually bought the it rest used. You have to do that. Yeah, big shout out to Rev Rides. Uh, they're the company that uh, gave us a good deal on these bikes. That one was used. I got a good deal on <laughs> this bike right here. Is so awesome. It is a Segway dirt bike the x160 agent brightside has a friend and he helped rev rides the guy who started rev rides it's an online battery powered bike sales website and he gave us a really good deal on these bikes our solar panels charge the batteries on the bikes and then we go off on our adventures with them really great and they don't make a lot of noise i just wish that segway made a smaller version that's as big as your uh, razor oh i just realized man. i got that yep yep yeah, Agent X, you were so fortunate. I was prepared to come over here and see lots of blood, um, just like gravel in your face. It's good thing you had that full face helmet too. We got summer sausage. Yeah. We got gluten-free crackers here, simple mills. And since Agent X heard himself a super special tree here, a juice box. <laughs> juice box makes everything better? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Not quite, but you know. There's Tracker. Are you hungry? 
Yeah, well, you I'm can have, have a little bit of lunch meat. Gonna... Yeah, I probably shouldn't give you that, but. <laughs> I need help! Help! There you are. There. Uh, help! Uh, uh, help! There. <laughs> Alright, so you think you're ready to go? On this thing? On that? No, sorry, you can't go on that. Yeah. Okay, we'll be extra careful now. All right, so we got about a mile and a half or so, or a mile to the... No, uh, it's, um... 1.2 miles? 1.8 miles. Oh, okay. To the ghost forest, okay? One. Oh. One. There are three. Raspberries. There are three. Nice. Right. Wait, um, this can you raspberry take my camera out? Can you take my camera so precious. Out? It is the first of the ripest of raspberries. Mm -hmm. But if you want to see us eat it, you have to check out Agent Axe's video that he's making today. Mm -hmm. Wait to the end of the video, then check the link description down below. Go subscribe to his channel. For real, somebody threw a dirty diaper out the window. Mickey Come Mouse. on. Mickey Mouse or Minnie? A Minnie Mouse. That's gross. Don't do that. Just don't do that. So you noticed it. You noticed it pretty, pretty quickly. I'm proud of you. So the ghost forest is beginning here. And I'll explain in a little bit when we get to a spot that it's really ghosty. It's a little bit eerie. It's just, I mean, you know, if you have an imagination, it can be a little creepy, but really, really cool. Not that he's saying that if you don't think it's creepy, you don't have an imagination. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I'm not saying that. I don't think that's creepy. You don't? No. We'll see if you could, do you, not do you notice anything different? It's yeah, super dry. Like it's super dry. dry. Yeah, why is that? Why is it because super dry? Fire. <sighs> because what? Forest fire. Forest fire. Bingo. All right, but we'll show you when it gets real cool. Check out how charred this tree is. Look at that. See that? Look at that. Wow. Yeah, that's like... Uh, 30 feet up, 40 feet up. These flames were so high, they were 40 feet in the air. Okay, so this is the Susan Creek Trailhead, and it is the location of a forest fire that was raging last year in the summer here in the Gifford Pinchot National Forest. And boy, that, was, that was a year ago? That was a year ago. Look at this. Do you remember what this looked like before? I don't. Do you remember? It, it was lush, green, gorgeous, gorgeous forest. We usually park right there. That's where we used to park. With our car? Yeah, yeah, we used to drive our car down here and park right over there. See this right here? That all was the parking blockade right here, the fence. That was a fence. See? Look, look at the bolts. This fir tree is like a charred marshmallow. It's just soft and just wipes right off. Can you make it? <laughs> okay, so this tree right here is a really good indication of how hot this fire was, how much it burned. So the forest floor used to be about this high right here. It burned about, uh, what, 16 inches in some areas? 16 inches or so of all of the buildup of these needles that fall from these fir trees and it literally burned like a foot. I cannot imagine the intensity of the heat that was going on here whenever that fire was burning. Whoo, boy. And sadly, it looks like it killed all of these trees. Look at them. Not a single needle left on there. There's some right there, one right no, there. Look at the right very there. tippy top. See, like that one, it has some needle. But at the very tippy that top. That one right there, it's a very tippy top. But not this one, none of these. Almost none of these right here have any needles, any green at the very, very top. Turn back and then turn back around. So this place got burned pretty bad. Part of the reason for that is because it's not natural for us to control forest fires. Typically, forest fires, they just rage no matter who did what. But because of Smokey the Bear, only you can prevent forest fires. We've been preventing them. We also cause them though. And so it's like a dual problem, right? We're preventing them when we shouldn't be and we're causing them when we shouldn't be either. <laughs> wow, check that out. 
That's all oh. fresh. That's fresh. That is fresh. Oh man, this tree is healing itself. That's gonna turn into fatwood, maybe. Yeah, the tree is healing itself from the fire, I guess. See, it just got hurt oh, in the roots yeah. here. It didn't burn up there. So it really takes a bird's eye view to do justice to just how desolate this place has become since the forest fire raged. Whenever you look at a forest that is just green and lush and hasn't been touched by a forest fire in over, you know, a hundred or several hundred years, and then you look at this forest that got decimated, you can see the clear and stark difference. It is just crazy. And using a bird's eye view, you can see the damage that this did to thousands of acres all across this area. You can see the difference in where the green splotches are, or the fresh trees that didn't get burned, and the areas that just got destroyed. Wow, look at that. You remember this tree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where we did uh, uh, the uh, survival uh, video, where we blindfold survival, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we hid in this log. You wanna go in there? Um, no, there's no? Right yeah. <laughs> This is a pretty cool tree. You can go up inside of it. Ow! Oh. It goes way up there. Oh, you got a blister? Mm -hmm. Ouch. Ah, we made it to the creek. That is beautiful. So this is Susan Creek, and I haven't fished here for a long time. I don't think anyone else has. So I think it's gonna be prime fishing right now. <laughs> we'll see. You ready to go fishing? Yeah! All right. So try to get as close to the logs as possible without getting on the logs, okay? Oh, oh perfect. Reel it, reel it, quick, quick. Reel it in, quick. Reel it in, girl, it's a big one. Reel it in. There you go. Bring it in, bring it in. That's a good rainbow. You got it, you got it, you got it. Woo! Ha ha! Oh my goodness! Girl, give me five! Wow! My sister just caught a fish. Oh, yep. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hey, buddy. Yep, that's it. I told him this is a good spot. I, I told him. So do you see where the hook is hooked? We want to pull it out. But it's got those barbs, so you got to grab it by one part of the hook, and you just got to work it out. Work it, work it. Oh, oh there you go. All right, now you got two. Oh, there you go. Nice, give me five, girl. Woo! We're gonna break its neck really quickly. Real quick, like that. Oh yeah. my. That's no. your trout, girl. Ready, jump. Oh, you got it. Ooh. I want to jump. <sighs> That's cold. That's pretty cold. That's cold. Oh, I missed it. It's in the eye. I got one. That's a big one. Nice. Yep. Yep. Oh, oh, that's a keeper. Oh. So this goes right along with that whole Smokey the Bear saying, only you can prevent forest fires. And that's actually true. Yeah, humans, there's no other creature that has been able to harness the power of fire, except humans. And that means that there's no other creature that can prevent forest fires except humans. Right? And there's no other creature that can directly cause them either and intentionally cause them except humans. And so therefore we have the power to save the world. That's huge! From forest fires, I guess. <laughs> and we also have the power to destroy Wait, let me see how long the world. It is. And turn that up to the max, right? Oh, that's, that's at least 10 inches. So I have the power to ease this trout suffering, whereas other creatures that would kill and eat it, they don't. They don't have that power. I mean, bears do. They catch it, they stuff it in their mouth. They... Yeah, but they don't have the intellectual, emotional empathy in order to try to ease its pain. They just, they just do whatever they want. <laughs> and I don't hold it against them. They're animals, but we are more than just animals, agents. But we are animals. And we can be the worst of animals, that's for sure. So Agent X, you see that big log laying on the ground? There's trout, so, oh, there, see that jump right there? 
there are trout hiding in that log waiting for something to come out a, fly, a butterfly to fall in the water or something and then they come up and eat it as far as you can oh that was a good one hold it up you don't want it dragging on the rocks it's not gonna Want some summer sausage? Oh. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Snack break. What are you doing? How did she get that? I don't know. Where did you put it? <sighs> you little thief. I give you a little summer sausage and then you eat the whole thing in the wrapper too. She's eating the wrapper. <laughs> Pig of a dog. She took it out of here, you thief. Okay, fishing training time, everybody. So, when it comes to these trout, okay, listen up. What they like to do is they like to hang out where there's still water and there's a place to hide. But, where there's water flowing past, and when something goes past, they dart out and try to eat it. So, like those roots. So, they might be hiding right up underneath those roots, and that's a hard spot to get to because there's that branch in the way, yeah. Uh, you, you're gonna you're gonna lose so many lures trying to get out. Yeah, oh. there you go. <laughs> you can climb all the way along that log and go get it. Daddy, tracker's coming. <laughs> Are you gonna save the day, tracker? <laughs> Don't be. It was stuck on that. <laughs> see, look, you see that little spot? See that little alcove right there? They're in those rocks. See that? Uh, Oh, you got, oh, you had one. Oh, God. You got one, yeah, yeah, uh, oh, it's a little one. But you got one, oh, it's locked off. They keep getting off. <laughs> I feel all weird with my haircut. <laughs> it's like, it's all gone. So the problem with fish, it's a good thing. So <laughs> some people call evolutionary advantage, right? The common sense, the fish, whenever they bite something and it like tries to hook them or it's something they don't like they spit it out or if they get off the hook they're probably not going to go after something that looks like that anymore that's smart that's good of them but the problem is is that if you almost catch a fish with a lure you're probably not going to catch that same fish if you keep casting that same spot they're done they're like i'm done <laughs> i just tried to eat a bug and it hooked me and started pulling me i'm done for a while but maybe if you try a different lure it'll work Okay, so. That rock. Yes, right there. So remember what I told you. Hold on, hold on, wait. They like, they're hanging out on the, see where the water's flowing fast right there? Uh -huh. They're hanging out right on the other side of that, waiting for something to come down that they can snatch out. Or right there. There you go. So you want to get further. Oh, 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 oh you got one? Oh, there were three of them chasing it. All right, but look. There you, oh yeah, that was a good one. Keep, you got to be fast though. You got, oh, that's a big one. Yeah! Bring it in, son. Bring it in. You got it. You got it. You got it. Woo! Look it at that. like a keeper. That is. It is a keeper. It Dude! Is. It is? Axel. Yeah, it is. Give me five. We it. each caught a keeper. <laughs> try it. No, look. Yeah. Now that's it. That's it. That's just a little over. I'm so proud of you. Give me five. You listen to me. You caught a keeper? He listened to me. You see, you listen to my instructions. I've been fishing all my life, and I learned to know not just how to fish, right? How to cast like, but to think like a fish and to remember where the fish bit, right? And they like to hide and they like to come out and get stuff from their hiding spots. So find those hiding spots and learn how to cast into them and you'll catch those fish. You stick your finger, hold your thumb at the top of its mouth there and then put your finger at the top of its neck right there and then you quickly bend back and snap, okay? You'll, you'll feel it go snap, okay? Ready, go. Push it with your finger. There you go. You feel that snap? Yeah, see? Stop moving. You see that? Oh, see? It pills, pierced right there. Yeah. See how that the fish isn't moving anymore? Look at that. It's not moving. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even have a chance to... Oh, oh it, it's getting away with your hook. Bring it back in. Reel it back in, girl. It's taking your line. <laughs> Reel it in. Reel it in. You got it? Oh, I got off. Got one. She caught got one. one. You got another one? Oh, it's a little one. Man, we're catching fish left and right here.
Ooh, got one. Got one. Come on, fishy. Come on. Easy going. Easy does it. There you go. You're too small. All right, there you go. Oh, this is a big one. Oh, yeah. This is a big one. Oh, it got off. <gasps> no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa. This one's pulling hard. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. There we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. Take it easy. That's another keeper. Woohoo. Man, sometimes it's hard to tell because they fight hard and they're small sometimes. Nice and easy. Okay. All right. Let's get that. There we go. Oh, got one. Oh, it's a little one, I think. Yep. It's a little one. Oh, all right. Let's let you go. There you go. Oh, another little one. So I hooked this one right through the eye. Ah, so I'm gonna keep that one. Oh, 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 oh. Look what I found. Isn't that pretty? It's really blue. Yeah, that's a stellar blue, Jay. Daddy, look. Yeah. Well, we gotta go, okay? All right, you two, we gotta head out. All good things must come to an end. We gotta start walking back up the creek. All right, we'll see you when we get back to the bikes. Okay, we're not back to the bike yet, but check this out. Look at that. The fire hollowed this log out, like, legit. That's so cool. Wow. Pretty neat. Asian Axe is yelling at us, wonder what he found. Okay, so we're still on the way to the campsite that we were at, but look at this. Oh my goodness. Whoo. That tree's ready to break at any minute. Man, I just look around here and you can already see. Like, this was, you know, who knows, like a thousand degrees or I don't know how hot this bet, this, uh, this fauna was here. But these ferns, man, they've been around since the dawn of time. When, as far as plants are concerned, they're some of the oldest things alive. And my goodness, they just do so well. They're coming right back up. I was out here a while ago. There was none of these ferns or wood sorrel there. And they're all coming back up. Desolation is definitely a word I would use to describe this. I don't know if you've ever seen the desolation of smog, the Hobbit movie. That's that's what this looks like. It looks like smog came through here, just went But life is coming up out of death. And that's why forest fires are important. They give way for a certain kind of life to flourish that usually can't. Oh, trillium. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. That must have been so gorgeous when the flowers were blooming. This is the biggest. Look at this. This is miner's lettuce. Siberian miner's lettuce. Mm. That's the biggest I've ever seen. I think this is due to the forest fire. Never, ever seen miner's lettuce that big. That's amazing. What? It's so delicious. Oh, I wish I had Agent Trinity's dressing right now. We gotta bring some of this back for Agent Axe. You found what? Bigfoot's footprint. Bigfoot's footprint. Where? Right there. Right there. <laughs> dumb, dumb, oh, dumb. <laughs> look at that. That's a big footprint. That's huge. Let's see what it looks like with my foot in there. It's definitely bigger than my no, foot. Look, I was thinking this. I don't know. It's not see, quite it's wider at that side and it's kind of thinner at this side, but it's a giant indent. See? Oh yeah, that's you're standing at Bigfoot's footprint. <laughs> Dude, check out that miner's list. That's did you Isn't take a picture? So Take a picture. I didn't have any. I like mm. four. I didn't have any. You didn't have any? Well, it has been a successful fishing day. If you want to see the fish fry, you got to check out Agent Axe's video. I'll put a link in the description down below on his channel. Be sure to go and subscribe to his channel. He makes some super cool videos. This video is not sponsored by RevRides, but I want to give a big shout out to RevRides. It's a company online that sells these bikes, a local company that's close to us, a small business. It's actually Agent Brightside's friend 
that made this company and boy they gave us a good deal on this Segway here and on that scooter right there. This thing is incredible. It still has almost full battery. It's on like 90% even though we rode all this way. So and it actually costs less than most dirt bikes do. So I'll put a link in the description down below. Is that where you got the scooter? Yes, that's where I got the scooter. Well, look at, look at the battery. Look See at the battery. See that R? That's where it writes. Yeah, battery's percent. Yeah, it's still, this scooter is still on full battery almost. So really fantastic. They're so quiet. I'm so excited about all the adventures we're going to go on on these bikes. So look forward to more adventures with this bike's these bikes. Not even that low. Uh, an Asian Hummingbird bike is a Stasic. It's got one, it's got this battery. It's like a power tool battery. She went all this way on one battery and it's still not on low. I got two more in the backpack just in case, but this is an awesome bike too. And don't forget to check out the adventureagents.com slash shop to get all of your adventure agents gear, your badge. All this gear is stuff that we use all the time when we're adventuring and we hope that it'll be helpful for your family too. Remember, take your families out on some adventures. Go somewhere, get out. Family adventure is so powerful for bringing families together. All right, agents, remember, life's an adventure and love is a key and love is a who. And love loves you. And we love you because love loves us. And love's given us the love so we can give it back to you. All right, Agent Tex out. Agent Hunter, we're out. Agent Axel, so right now the time is 9.06.57 seconds. Okay, it's 907. <laughs> we better hurry, let's roll out. 907 and 5. Yeah!